What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly sports history for November 18th, 2022. A couple housekeeping things before we get started today. New Back to the Future dropped last night, and it, we covered the 1994 Eagles. Didn't realize how frustrating that whole entire era of Eagles football was going back to the Buddy Ryan, Rich Kotite, even into the Ray Rhodes era. Just a lot of unfulfilled expectations, a lot of bad breaks, crappy endings, all of those things that I feel contribute to the entire Negadelphia, Old Philly mindset. And it was hard not to get caught up in that as I was taking a trip back and, and going through some of the the things that happened and that's where a lot of especially when it comes to the Eagles like I don't know if you had that prior to the Buddy Ryan era because for the most part they won in 1960 and then they were shitty until Dick Vermeil came in in the 70s had them on that natural progression went to the Super Bowl and lost but I still don't know if there was that negative vibes to that, like, oh, here we go. The Eagles are going to lose again. Um, I will say probably during that time period, some of that may have been transferring over from the Sixers and the even the Flyers to a certain point. But, they, I mean, they were still coming off of two, two Stanley Cups. But the Sixers and the Phillies especially, because starting in 76, as we covered last week with the Dr. J information, it there was a lot of... They were there. They just never won. Um, ultimately, both of those teams did win championships. But I just kind of questioned with the Eagles because then they fell off again until Buddy Ryan. But then when Buddy Ryan got good with that team, every year they were in it and they just could not get over the hump. So that, it made me, like I said, made me realize that's where a lot of the Negadelphia comes in. And then you go right from that era and Andy Reid, who is probably the poster child in Philadelphia for unfulfilled expectations. No reason why any of those teams with Andy Reid or the Buddy Ryan era, and for that matter, the beginning of the Rich Kotite era, should not have won a Super Bowl. But that's a whole other topic for another Back to the Future. So be sure to check out the, the new episode about the 1994 Eagles, wherever you get your podcast. There is no video for that. I got new earphones that apparently every time I adjust them in my ear, it shuts off the recording. I've actually, I use these the same ones for work. And even when I do it at work, I close out of Teams meetings and things like that. So I do apologize. No YouTube for this week or uh, this, yeah, this week's Back to the Future. But be sure to check that out. Give it a like and a listen. Big game for the Temple Owls tonight. They play the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Big Ten school. They're not upper echelon Big Ten. However, it's still Big Ten talent, so it's a good test for them. I'm anxious to see how they bounce back after what has been basically an up-and-down season. They beat Nova, lost to Wagner in overtime, lost to Vanderbilt in overtime. Very easily could be 3-0, and I think based on the expectations of making a tournament this year for this team, this is a game they have to win, and Rutgers is undefeated. They're a Big Ten school, but the the Sixers or the Sixers, the the Owls need to win this game. So I'm anxious to see five o'clock. Get done work, have a beer, watch the game. Flyers dig lose four to one to the Bruins last night. Played them tough until the third period, and no shame in this loss. Like I had mentioned yesterday, this is a good barometer test now. The the Bruins are 15 and 2 now. So they are the class of the Eastern Conference, but the Flyers now see where they are. This me- good measuring stick game. They know where they need to be. If there is such a thing as a good loss, um, I mean, I, I don't think any loss is good, but at least if you can take the the positive out of this, they should be good to know like okay this is where we need to go but with all that being said it's been kind of a shitty week in philadelphia for our sports teams um sixers haven't really played since uh early in the week but you have the the eagles lost uh flyers lost a couple this week uh the owls lost to vandermilt so I don't know about you guys. I miss that, that the Phillies from this year and that whole World Series run. So I'm going to give a little Phillies fix and hopefully bring some positivity. 
And I say that until I mention the name of the person we're going to talk about. I don't think there is a more polarized person in Philly's history than this guy. But on this day, November 18th, 1997, the Phillies made a trade with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, as they were known at the time. They traded shortstop Kevin Stocker for one Bobby Abreu, who, like I said, is probably one of the most polarized guys in Philly sports history. You either like him or you don't. Um, I can hear hear my brother's blood pressure going up right now just by the sheer mention of Bobby Abreu's name. His head is probably going to explode. He's probably sitting in his car or out there like drinking coffee down in his basement, probably through his coffee mug, at just at the mention of his name. There's few people that, that get that reaction out of him. Bobby Abreu is one, and we might as well go for the trifecta, Kyle, if you're listening. Reno Mahe and Eric Brentlett. So... But before anybody starts canceling their subscriptions to this day in Philly sports history, breathe. Because Bobby Abreu was vastly, vastly underrated as a player in Philadelphia. He stayed, played here for nine years. He hit 303, hit 195 homers, 814 RBIs, had almost 1,500 hits, including 348 doubles. He was in the MVP conversation for uh, for those of you who are looking. MVP conversation five times. He was a two-time All-Star. He actually played two seasons where he didn't miss a game. So he was definitely durable. And most of the time, the other seasons, he was in the high 150s of games played. Won the Home Run Derby in 2005. So he hit over 300 Six times as a Philly, hit 335 in 99. His lowest batting average as a Philly was 286. Seven straight seasons with 35 doubles, 20 homers, and 20 stolen bases. He is the only player in Major League Baseball history other than Barry and Bobby Bonds who have more. They're the only ones that have more 20 home runs, 20 stolen base seasons. So I, I know he is very polarizing because of his lack of hustle and um, defense, I guess you could call it. And, and I think that's where I, I, I could, I'm still picturing Kyle right now. He's probably screaming at me like, you're full of shit. Blah, 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 blah. But he appeared to not be a hustler. Did he get a bad rap? I mean, he won a gold glove. I, um, so who knows? But... I don't know. I think he's the the most underrated and polarizing player in Philly's history. He went on to the Wall of Fame, Philly's Wall of Fame in 2019. Um, he's borderline Hall of Fame. Like I don't know if he's Hall of Famer. I'd probably put Rollins in before Bobby Abreu, but there are people out there that well respected that can make a case for Bobby Abreu being a Hall of Famer. I don't think he's quite there yet, but. He played, like I said, played for the Phillies from um, 97 to 2006 when, in a salary dump, uh, Pat Gillick traded him to the Yankees basically for a bucket of balls. And ironically enough, I, I'll never forget this. Once they traded him, we thought that they were giving up on that season. They ended up going on a run and almost went to the wild card that season in, in 2006 after they traded him. Uh, they ended up three games out. But... Phillies ended up okay. They won the division the next year and went on that win, that streak of winning five straight divisions. But like I said, I, I, I knew I, or an episode coming up in the future for Back to the Future is those early 2000 teams. And just like how did they not make a wild card or a playoff run just once? But anyway, on this day, November 18th in 1997, the Phillies traded for Bobby Obreu, who became one of, like I said, the most polarizing players in Phillies history. Let me know what you think about Bobby Obreu. Are you pro-Bobby, anti-Bobby? Let me know. It's Friday. Go Owls. Have yourselves a great day. And until next time, Bobby Abreu. I'll see you when I see you.